good morning, folks. Uh, I'm Greg Elkenbard. I'm Senior Technical Director from Mirantis. And I'm here to describe uh, the effort that Mirantis Intel and other partners are doing to get the MVME over fabric technology into OpenStack. So, uh, quick agenda. Uh, I'm going to provide a very quick technology overview. Obviously, uh, MV, VMO or Fabric is a large topic, uh, but we'll be happy to answer questions at the end of this. Uh, and then, a quick demo of the Cinder driver that we wrote. Um, if there is a couple of minutes left, I'll be more than happy to um, answer questions. Um, and then, uh, I'll stick around uh, just in case somebody has some more. Uh, all right, so technology overview. Uh, so first of all, what is MVME? MVME is Non-Volatile Memory Express. It's the standard for attaching um, fast, low latency devices, uh, storage devices primarily, devices that look more like memory than they do like legacy magnetic storage. Uh, it replaces the old SAS SATA interface, uh, and it's targeted for devices which are ultra-low latency, uh, have a higher degree of parallelism than a traditional disk drive with a single stack of heads reading stuff. Uh, and uh, it's for devices that offer very, very high throughput. Um, uh, it's a standard interface right now for the PCE flash devices, but there will be other devices that will be coming online that will use the interface, um, just like the SAS interface began to be used uh, for practically everything once it uh, got standardized. Uh, MVME over Fabric um, is a relatively short extension. Uh, to the MVME protocol, uh, all it does is it provides you alternative transports. It allows you to extend uh, your MVME devices uh, over Ethernet, uh, over InfiniBand, or a fiber channel. Um, it uses several RDMA protocols um, over Ethernet. Uh, there is a couple of them, apparently. Uh, and then, uh, as, as well as R RDMA over InfiniBand. Um, and it uses uh, FC and VME protocol um, over the um, fiber channel transport. Uh, what are the key values that it offers? Uh, it now provides you ability to deliver disaggregated compute and storage, uh, which means that your compute cluster can grow at the speed where you need to offer the computes, and your storage cluster can grow proportional to the storage that you need to grow. So you have uh, no loss of flexibility. Right? So you can evolve either side, the storage or the compute side, completely independently of each other. Right? So just like the traditional SAN unlocked uh, us from having to rely on uh, uh, small storage pools uh, in the local systems, uh, this does the same thing with the uh, super fast MVME devices. So while the current generation is not quite there, the future generations um, are going to be delivering uh, 10 microseconds or less uh, access latencies uh, to um, over 100 gigabit fabrics. Uh, it also provides you a data center-wide storage pool. So again, imagine SAN on the cheap. All right. So here is a quick picture of the MVME over fabric. Um, it is an industry standard. Uh, it reuses most of the MVME spec. It just replaces the transport with more flexible transport uh, options. So the MVME the device no longer has to be attached strictly via the PCI bus. Why is this not? Guys, this. Idiots. All right, thanks for pointing that out. Um, OK. So uh, here's what the data center fabric looks like. Uh, you have uh, disaggregated compute nodes, uh, and you can scale them independently. You have a storage fabric. Uh, you can start with a 40 gigabit Ethernet uh, or 40 or 56 gigabit uh, InfiniBand, but you can uh, advance uh, to uh, 
uh, 100 gigabit uh, and get uh, higher throughput and uh, much lower latency. All right. So what have we done uh, up to date? Uh, so our goal was to create a cinder driver based on the Intel uh, SPDK uh, in order to uh, popularize this technology, uh, get the preview of it out to folks, uh, and uh, with the goal of integrating this in into the Akata. So the Intel SPDK is a reference implementation of the uh, Intel uh, uh, of the NVMe or Fabric target, Intel is distributing it to all of the NVMe over Fabric uh, vendors to uh, jumpstart the technology. Um, like I said, our, our goal is to just get the basic demo out uh, into Newton uh, and then get the code into the Arcada. Uh, this is based uh, on OpenStack uh, Newton right now using Ubuntu 16.04. We had to update the kernel because a lot of the MVME over fabric hooks in the kernel itself uh, only come in in kernel 4.8. Uh, we extended uh, Nova a little bit. Uh, just change uh, OS Brick slightly to define uh, the NVMe or Fabric devices. Uh, and uh, we created a Cinder driver uh, to demonstrate these basic functionalities. The goal for Kata uh, is to uh, commit to Nova updates at least in there uh, and try to develop the fully functional driver. Kata is a relatively short cycle, so we don't know if we'll get the driver in, but at least the Nova changes should be in. Uh, so. Uh, who are the partners of crime on this? All right, so this project got started with Mirantis and Intel, uh, and Mellanox and Supermicro are joining the projects to help out. Uh, Mellanox with their gear um, and software help, and Supermicro with their hardware. All right, so here's the quick demo setup before we switch into the demo itself. Um, so the hardware is using uh, Supermicro servers. Uh, I didn't put the particular model. It doesn't really matter. All they have to do is have a spare PCI slot to fit the Mellanox cards in, uh, which are necessary for RDMA. Um, so a lot of the uh, Ethernet cards still do not support uh, RDMA appropriately, um, or they're not supported by the um, kernel code. So uh, Mellanox is probably the best bet uh, for you to go ahead and get the environment up yourself if you want to use it. Um, so we use Connect X3 cards simply because we have a really, really old 40 gig switch in a lab. Uh, obviously, you can use Connect X3 Pro, Connect X4 cards, uh, whatever is your underlying networking gear. Uh, the Supermicro NVMe target that was graciously given to us by Supermicro can fit up to uh, 24 cards, which means it can have up to 48 uh, terabytes of uh, NVMe. That's actually quite impressive. It's probably worth a lot more than my car. Uh, okay, so the uh, target right now was only equipped with um, a couple of devices, uh, mostly because we're not testing performance. We're not doing anything but testing basic functionality. Uh, and uh, again, it's using the Mellanox Connect X3 cards. Uh, uh, again, switch limitation. We didn't want to try to see if the newer cards will talk to the older switch. Uh, we had very little time before to prepare for the demo. Uh, the software is Newton using DevStack. Uh, Ubuntu 16.04, we did upgrade the kernel to 4.8 uh, because the 4.4 kernel does not have necessary hooks. Uh, and we're using the standard Intel SPDK um, as the target. Um, Intel is actually actively developing it, so they've developed a series of API calls for a driver to call, and they're going to be improving those calls in the future. All right, so let's see if I can get to the demo. Yep. All right. So we're going to wire uh, the MVME device uh, into the syndra.conf uh, to activate the driver. Uh, configure a few MVME parameters so we can reach the device. And uh, here it is. We've created one small vo volume on there just to try things out on the backend target. Now we're going to go through and create the other one. Uh, using uh, OpenStack. So we're going to create a volume uh, on our MVME target of two terabytes in size. Uh, 
then uh, we're uh, going to make sure it got created properly uh, and launch, a, launch an image uh, to attach the volume to. OK, uh, now we're going to attach this volume to the image. Great, actually worked. Magic of video. Uh, no, I, I, uh, the demo actually works. Uh, the code will be available uh, out uh, on the GitHub shortly. So if you guys want to go play with it, uh, you're more than welcome. Uh, so as you can see, we created a two terabyte volume on the back end. It's now completely visible. Uh, so what we're going to do next uh, is we're going to try to put a file system on it. So we're logging in into the uh, Cirrus image that we built. And we're going to uh, fdisk it and format it, make a facet, uh, in order to put a file system, do a little bit of I.O. to it, and verify that uh, I.O. is there. Right. So we've created a 2 terabyte uh, disk. Now we're going to do mount it do some DD to it, just to see, make sure that we can do basic I.O. All right. Now we're going to mount the same file system on the back end, just to make sure that what we write got persisted. And voila. We have our test file that was created uh, in the VM. We could see it. So now we're going to detach the volume and destroy it to demonstrate uh, those Cinder operations. As you can see, the volume has been removed from the back end, so uh, the detach and destroy operations were successful. All right, folks, uh, that's the end of the demo. Uh, now, uh, welcome any questions you may have. Or not, in which case, uh, enjoy the rest of your afternoon. <laughs>